Hello, welcome to the October <laughs> Cards and Channeling event uh, that I do for my Patreon peoples. And also, uh, welcome to the monthly read for November. It is the 2nd of November. And I asked what deck wanted to be in, like utilized for this month's reading, and it's the I Ching wants to be the monthly read and the key card that I do, uh, the additional card that I pull for my Patreon peoples who contribute at the level of $10 a month. Um, they also get private card pulls. So if you've wanted a reading from me, I think you can afford it. That's true. The cheapest way to get a reading from me every month or every month of the year that you want to get one. So considering it's just the reaching for our reading, I'm just gonna what's the one? That would be interesting, but let's take it for okay. Why it would be interesting is that um I guess I'm still uh you know impressed by the fact that <laughs> this works. Because sometimes I'm like could it, could it be so simple that I just pull whatever card? And of course, it's uh, you have to like trust yourself. And so it's a, like self actualizing and self affirming and self fulfilling um, permission slip to say what is there for you. Right. So I, I obviously have an influence on the cards and they have an influence on me. And I have to deal with the hand that I have dealt myself and us. Um, this is so eaching. Um, so it makes sense that, uh, as I am choosing cards, I am making a choice about how they will be chosen and where they will be. And I have my method, my methods of doing that, right? You know, like you've seen me many months, you know, with the pendulum, I use the pendulum. I have knocks that I use in the body, which is like certain things that happen to my body that I interpret in particular ways that have happened over a lifetime. And then there's also how like cards flip out of the deck or stick out of the deck and these sort of things. So well, let's see what, uh, what fate the cards and myself have chosen for my assessment of what is to come <laughs> for the month of November. Um, so first and foremost, uh, the monthly read is the concern, the opportunity and the obstacle and the advantage and the aversion. We have uh, eaching passages 27, 20 and 11. 27 is the concern, 20 is the opportunity or the obstacle. And 11 is the advantage or the aversion. And we'll go for that as we go over that. Obviously, we get to the key card later for those who are part of that. So the concern is 27. What is objectively going on? And I don't know these by heart, so I go to the book. 27 says, excuse me one second. Right, cool. 27 says, providing nourishment. Above mountain, below thunder, thunder under the mountain, attend to the people's needs. Thunder arouses the populace from complacency and shows them what is most urgently needed. It is important to nourish people with the food they require taking care to address their concerns. A wise leader will not impose their preferences on the people, but rather will listen to their will and endeavor to provide nourishment of both body and spirit. Well, that's apropos, wouldn't you say? Um, and timely. And I'll read that last part about what a wise leader is one more time. A wise leader will not impose their preferences on the people, but rather will listen to their will, the people's will, and endeavor to provide nourishment of both body and spirit to the people of whom, of course, they are part of the people, right? So that which they regulate and allow is 
at anything that they could be subjected to themselves. Um, and so obviously with the concern, it's like <laughs> elect wise leaders also uh, work, have wise relationships with people, right? Like, and by wise, I don't mean clever or intellectual or, or like there's no cunning in wisdom, right? It's, it's a natural abundance that is gathered from how you choose to participate and perceive the experiences that have come to you, whether of your own doing in existence or because other people have brought you, you know, their experiences or their, or their stories. But then how, what you choose to assess from those things, if you choose to assess anything at all, right? That becomes wisdom and everybody has their own. Um, but what they choose to assess, you know, may not be something that any particular person thinks it's wise, you know, to be, it's necessary to be wise about. Okay. Um, and, and also with this, this particular passage, it's also just saying like the will of the people is what the le what a wise leader actually attends to, um, not their own will, and also not like the will of a previous people, right? Um, but the will of the people who they are actually governing. Um, Where did this go? Oh, on, on the first page, it says, "We'll listen to the will of the people and endeavor to provide nourishment of body and spirit." Um, and recognizing too, of course, versus like in a title change, generationally speaking. So we're obviously in a time where, um, multi-generation, multi-generally, generation, generational, <laughs> multi-generational, multi-generational, um, multi-generational relationships are so much more possible and prevalent depending on where you live obviously because there's obviously like you know war and genocide and things happening in multiple places where there are groups of people who obviously do not have a a long lifespan um but in general because of the world becoming smaller due to migration and technology and and progress and advancement in in being able to access certain places or even know of them in ways that you might not have been able to in previous times where the internet didn't exist or, you know, like you couldn't jump on a plane assuming you can afford a ticket, which obviously a lot of people cannot. Um, but like there are more people alive and also more people aware of each other who are alive than ever before. And there's also just more people to govern, right? So there's just like more relationships, more kinds of relationships, more intergenerational relationships, international relationships, um, environmental relationships, right? Um, beyond culture, beyond nationhood, there are all these um, globalized ways that we are connected, um, regardless of how we feel about that. And because Earth is all is one organism and we live on it and we are going to be subjected to whatever it is subjected to, like how how not, you know, how would you not be subjected to in some way, shape or form to what the very thing that you exist upon is subjected to. Right. Like. When you when you know that you can drop it in the comments. If I ever figure that out, I'll come back and drop it in the comments. But meaning that, like, of course, there is more conversations happening and more types and, and more challenges that are presented as a result of the fact that there are more youth alive and more elders alive and more people in between. And the elders are older and the youth are active younger. And there's a lot of conversations happening that in previous generations wouldn't have been happening on a global scale or wouldn't have been happening, you know, at all, maybe in a cultural scale that is unavoidable. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't control the influence 
no person, no one person controls the influence. There are people who have gathered quite a few means of um, constructing influence and 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 generating influence. Um, I want to call it generating and constructing and not having because it's not something people have, it's something people share. So, um, and share in their participation of, of course, because there's always an, an ability to choose and therefore to change your mind at any given moment. Um, and that, and the spectrum of choices will, will lengthen or, or shorten depending on the context and how you again, come back to how you perceive this thing, right? The world. So, um, with the concern, particularly, I think there's energy here where it's just like, you want the general you okay we we want we want a leader we want leaders who are who are willing to consider what is actually taking place therefore actually considering who is actually there what is actually there um what is actually going on greater and greater contexts right like the wisest leaders can consider micro and macro contexts and those contexts overlapping and and find a way to meet the needs of people of the general overlapping con- like uh groups spheres circles communities um of people who um whose will and concern are being um, acknowledged by the person who is being given the position to, to, you know, guide, lead, govern um, the general, the general population, the overall population, the population that's there. Um, And, and that that governance, that governance, I'm like English, okay, that governance from that wise person who is able to consider micro and macro contexts and spheres overlapping and individually and overall um, is then also in the context of uh, each passage number 27 is uh, providing nourishment of body and spirit, right? So creating a context where as many people as possible are getting what they need, not necessarily everything that they want, but what they need. And then also knowing what a need is, is obviously essential to having a wise leader because there are things that people consider necessity that aren't necessary. Like obviously what Hitler thought was necessary was not necessary. What Biden thinks is necessary is not necessary. What leaders throughout history across the world and particularly in colonial um, contexts, have thought is necessary has has never really been necessary. Um, and then also being willing to you know beyond the social implications of humans, be able to consider those spheres of of perspective right to the best of our ability, obviously from a human context, but like nature and water and like the nature of things the 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 actual nature quality of a thing what a thing is what a thing means you know so that i mean how would you have your body nourished if the physical environment in which your body exists is not considered by the leadership that you have contributed to allowing the governorship of um, the given that you've given the power to have the governorship of, you know, your region or your area. So I think now more than ever, and obviously like this is an election month in the United States anyway, in general in November, you know, is when we do our big presidential election, but it's there's other elections that happen on a minor scale, depending on the state or a more minor scale. Um, 
And we are moving into a year in, in 2024 where a lot of people are going to be changing the way that they pick leaders, um, myself included. Uh, I will be writing in a candidate. will not be voting for Biden. I happen to think it's criminal that the Democratic Party isn't running candidates. Mad cowardly. Also uh, unnecessary if you think your candidate is that weak that they cannot stand up to debate, then you need to pick a different candidate. So if you won't do it, I'm going to do it. And that's why I'm a registered independent. But back to the reading. Opportunity obstacle. How are we treating this leadership, whether it be wise or not, right? Because the beginning of this is also talking about thunder arouses the populace from complacency and shows them what is most urgently needed. It is important to nourish people with the food they require, taking care to address their concerns. So let's see if, you know, how we're treating that opportunity obstacle. We have passage 20, which is contemplation above wind, below earth. And before we had above mountain, below thunder. Above wind, below earth. Wind above earth, contemplation brings perspective. On the ground, the air is still, but at height, the winds blow. Standing upon a tall tower, one feels the purifying force of the wind. From this high place, contemplation brings perspective and clarity. The potential for spiritual power is fulfilled. From this high place, wait, standing upon a tall tower, one feels the purifying force of the wind. From this high place, contemplation brings perspective and clarity. The potential for spiritual power is fulfilled. Um, so, you know, we have a spirit crossover, right? Because it says a wise leader will nourish the people's body and spirit, right? They will endeavor to do it to the best of their ability, obviously. And then 20 is like, okay, our opportunity obstacle is the potential for uh, spiritual power to be fulfilled, right? The potential for spiritual power f is fulfilled. But from the high place, contemplation brings perspective and clarity. So, you know, you know, yes, they're talking about a mountain. They're talking about the rarefied air, um, not only these amount of surface of land that's actually you're able to cover, but the and the force of the elements at that level where you don't have, you know, gravity or the earth to really support you. Um, the winds, you know, blow strong, but they're also saying a high place is not just a physical place. They're saying a high place is a place where that where you have perspective and clarity. So, you know, perspective and clarity is perspective is knowing, you know, this is how I consider it from my from where I am and that there are other places of consideration depending on where you are because like loca location is a quality of a thing right so me occupying you know 15 degrees and me occupying 45 degrees in terms of perspective is are different different places um and so and also a different like uh a surface area of place, right? So there's also this emphasis with the opportunity or the obstacle, right? Are we using things as a stepping stone or as a roadblock? There's a call to be contemplative um, and to gain perspective and clarity on the circumstances and to know that as, as still as things are on the ground, right? As solid as things may seem on the human level, right us engaging each other as the little people on the earth <laughs> and um running around like sims basically that on on earth's level right at a height the winds blow like on earth's level everything is malleable you know everything is subject to everything else and just because on the human level we only have cultivated for the most part or socially conditioned each other to focus on one another that doesn't mean that there aren't greater things going on and like things that include us which means that we can not only learn from those things and and help the and help use those things to govern ourselves um but that we can also gain perspective and clarity from those things if we are willing to contemplate those things so as still as it feels on the ground, right? As solid as it seems, as binary as it seems, as 
as physically dire as it seems. You know, there's the perspective of the fact that we are a part of something that that goes on and on and on, that has perspective and clarity that is in a high place, and that, you know, we can be as attentive to that as we are to the fact that we're in a low place without adding a judgment quality to that as if they are not a part of the same thing and that they're as if they are not in, you know, supporting each other in the fact where regardless of whether they intend to support each other, that they support each other simply as a consequence of being a part of the same thing as a result. I don't want to say consequence because sometimes like that word has obviously taken on a negative connotation, although I don't think that etymologically it has a negative connotation. And I can't recall what that is off the top of my mind. And we're not going to get into that or else we're never going to finish this reading. However, you know, that everything that is a part of the whole has its place and is supporting from that place in the way that you choose to perceive its relevance. Um, and from the greater perspective that you have, the greater, like the great, like the higher up you are, meaning the greater, uh, spheres and circumferences and perspectives and realities and, and things that you can contemplate and consider, um, the more perspective and clarity you will have. So from the absolute, absolute level of, Ex- existence's perspective everything is in its right place and as you know as solid as things may seem from any particular place from Scott, all the way through that saying itself, itself should go. And knowing where itself should go, it does so. So that brings us to card number three, the character card. What about our character is helping or hurting the circumstances that we have uh, regarded in the concern and in the opportunity obstacle? And we have number 11. I know, I'm sorry, I'm like showing you these. But... Okay. And then, right? I want to make sure you can see it. Okay. And then, 11. So, 11. The advantage (laughs) or the aversion. What about our character? is helping or hurting us in the situation. Number 11, peace. Above earth, below heaven. And with 20, we had above wind, below earth. Um, so earth was below and now earth is above, below heaven. Heaven and earth unite. In winter, peace is found through rest. In spring, peace is found through action. Heaven influences earth through the cycle of seasons, and all living things prosper by harmonizing with them, harmonizing with the seasons. Thus the wise person, we're back to this wise wise person, thus the wise person finds peace by finding heaven within their own earthly being. I'll read that again. In winter, peace is found through rest. In spring, peace is found through action. Heaven influences earth through the cycle of seasons and all living things prosper by harmonizing with them. Thus, the wise person finds peace by finding heaven within their own earthly being. Yeah, you know, because the interesting thing is like, Regardless of everything else, your job is to harmonize with 
what is the seasons? What is, right? Because seasons are relative, obviously. Not everywhere has a spring, okay? Um, or a winter for that matter. So, but knowing that the elements are considered a part of the existential makeup of all things from a Taoist context, the seasons are made up of the elements in, in, in organized fashion, you know, in an organized way. And and so attending to the seasons is attending to the elements is attending to existence, which is attending to the Tao, right? So it, it you can you can take that and say, okay, so the emphasis here is like the wise person finds peace by finding heaven within their self, their own earthly being, their earthly existence. Um, because wherever you go, there you are, right? The more that you are willing to be the the self that you most prefer, but also be the version of yourself that you wish you would be, could be if the circumstances were different. Like the more that you make the internal circumstances that you actually control yourself as close, as, as, as faithful, as committed, as aligned with what you consider to be heaven within yourself right then the closer you are to the existential reality of being there because even if you were there but you don't have it if you haven't cultivated that within yourself how would you recognize it or hold space for it how would you be able to you know tolerate that and knowing that like in 11 you know we're talking about a wise person in 27, we're talking about a wise leader, okay? So knowing that card number three is the, what about my characters helping or hurting the situation? It's like, am I being a wise person? Am I aligned with what is? And of course, then you have to remember that in the last reading, it was like, meaning in number 20, opportunity obstacle is it you know is it a stepping stone or is it a blockade is it it's something that's going to elevate me you know an elevator or is it a a a dam you know maybe that's what i'll say instead of a stepping stone or a blockade is it a dam or is it an elevator um and so knowing that like the wise leader has many micro and macro perspectives that are individually regarded that overlap and that interact and that knowing in a le- in number 20 opportunity obstacle we're told you know just because things seem really static and still and like solid on the ground doesn't mean that that's what it is when there's when you have greater perspective you can see things from the perspective of the greater the higher self okay whatever and then getting to 11 about what about my character is helping hurting the situation we recognize oh okay like now we're talking about heaven now we're back to talking about this high place and and you know wanting to be there essentially you know uh, that that feeling like earth is some sort of punishment or relinquishment of that of of heaven and then recognizing okay well if i have the perspective of a wise leader the perspective of a high place that allows me contemplation and clarity then i know that everything is included within the whole and that place slowly on the ground is connected to heaven because I can perceive it from heaven and because it came from the cosmos, right? It came from the ether. It came from, you know, if you want God and, um, and knowing that it came from that and that it is descended from that lineage, that that lineage must be inherent in that thing, AKA the little person, AKA you in your experience, and that you can call upon that aspect 
that you are included in from the greater perspective to bring yourself as close to that greater perspective as physically possible by you, you know, um, minding your business and attending to what that is for you and being honest with yourself about what that is. Right. Um, you know, and knowing that in winter peace is found through rest, right. So we're also, we're literally going into winter. So there's this statement like, (laughs) I heard you have to gut it. Um, take a break. You gotta, you gotta be willing to step. You gotta be willing to, to, I don't want to use the word hold back. And it's not even about stepping back, which is why I stopped saying that. Um, other than the fact that I am working to not use ableist language, but it's more like you have to be willing to not be capable of all things all the time like the whole point of seasons and elements is that things are what they are and certain things are what a certain way um and the more perspective that you have the more you recognize that that's true of everything that is a thing and so knowing that from the greatest perspective everything that is a thing has a way and still coexists with everything that is another thing that hasn't been with another way is is the the peace, the heaven, right? That ultimately everything is taken care of, that you are in a reality that is connected to itself and that will never lose that perspective, which is infinite and which includes you and everything that you don't understand yet about the world. And you can find that peace and that heaven within yourself um, and bring heaven to earth and be heaven on earth right um and know that humanity is of course capable of divinity and because we come from that place and that if we allow ourselves to be as connected to all that is as the strongest forces of nature that we understand are that we we transmute the materials of, you know, what is near the ground into the materials of heaven, which created what is of the ground. But you are almost calling upon the highest aspect of everything, um, not least of which, and of first, and not only not least of which, but first of all, yourself. Um, and recognizing that yourself, a human being, is capable of the same, what I call dynamic neutrality, what some people call divinity, is what other people call, you know, you know, like, magnanimity. I don't really know what the word is, like, grandness of being (laughs) okay so thank you for being here for the monthly read for those of you who were i hope that this guides you through not only november but winter uh hopefully although obviously i'll be back in december with the next read and i don't know if it will come from the Ching. obviously the deck chooses chooses and i and i listen you know uh there's a whole story i could tell about why that is um and if i knew how long i'd been recording i would but i actually don't really remember when i started (laughs) i'm gonna keep it pushing um so thank you for being here for the monthly read and for all those of you on patreon who are doing the most now it's time for me to do the most and read the key card and do your individual card pulls so doing this so i know where to cut the video so i give you what you paid for